Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Trevor LaFleche of Dovetail. Thank you very much for joining me. Very nice to be here. So what do you mean exactly by instant payments? When we set out to conduct the survey, we realised that there were different terms being used for the same thing uh, across the industry. So terms like real time, instant, immediate, uh, were all being used to describe the, the same thing. Uh, essentially, uh, what we mean by instant is the movement of good funds between two bank accounts uh, with a confirmation going back to the sender within about five seconds. Uh, some schemes are more, some schemes are less, uh, but the industry is sort of coalescing on, on that definition and that's what we've used. So could you give me a bit more background on the survey and the profile of the respondents? Uh, sure. Um, the survey is global in, uh, in scope um, and was conducted because we wanted to get a temperature of the industry as we saw more of our customers and more of our prospects um, having active instant payment projects. Um, so we set out to uh, get a quantitative survey on the industry readiness, uh, but we've also uh, solicited input uh, from a number of industry participants. Uh, so we've got uh, inputs for the likes of uh, Liz Oaks from KPMG, who has extensive experience in the Asia Pacific market, uh, from Tony Richter of HSBC, uh, who also chairs the European Payments Council, uh, from Daniel Schmuggler from the Euro Banking Association, and from Steve Ledford of The Clearinghouse. Um, so that gives us more of a regional flavor on top of the, the global quantitative survey. Um, in, to uh, in, the number, in total, the number of respondents uh, is about 130 uh, respondents from 78 institutions covering 24 countries. So it's a, uh, a fair representative sample of uh, what's going on in instant payments around the globe. What key findings did you find from the survey then? In total, we received about 128 uh, respondents to the survey, uh, covering 78 institutions uh, from 24 countries. So we think it's a very good uh, re representative survey of the you know, temperature of the instant payments problem. So what were the key findings from the survey? There's a lot of data coming back from the survey, but I think there's three key findings that, that stand out. Two-thirds of respondents see instant payment capability being available in their institution within the next two years. So this is a great optimistic statement about instant payments and the project work that must be going on inside institutions to make this a reality. It might be optimistic, but it's a good first step uh, for the industry. 60% of respondents see instant payments as the number one strategic priority for their institution. And 50%, over 50%, actually see this as a strategic investment that doesn't require a business case. So they're making the investment uh, because they have to, and they see it as a strategic capability. The downside is that 69% of respondents see their current payment system as being incapable of handling the requirements for instant payments. So there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done in a very short period of time if everything is said to be true. So Trevor, what about the regional differences? I think globally the pressures are very similar across all of the regions. Uh, the banks have realized that uh, the pressure to move money as easy as an email uh, is there and that's a consistent theme. Um, regionally, we find there, there's differences in the scope uh, and complexity of their implementations. In Asia Pacific, we're seeing that the projects are mostly domestically focused uh, and proceeding at a pace that suits their environments uh, with some unique implementations such as the NPP in Australia. Uh, that is a different model from, from others we've seen uh, in the rest of the world. Uh, in Europe, we see domestic projects moving at quite a quick pace. Um, and, but there's still um, efforts to be uh, done on uh, making sure those are interoperable. Uh, with the uh, ISO 20022 and the, uh, as an underpinning for all of these systems, uh, there's hope that uh, Europe can actually achieve uh, the goal of interoperability. Uh, in the US, the scale and nature of their banking system uh, makes instant payments probably more difficult, but I think there's been a lot of work behind the scenes, and we might see some bold moves that might uh, put them at the forefront of that market. Globally, what do you think the state of instant payments is then? I think if we look at the state of instant payments globally, it's moved from an if to a when. And uh, the banks have really turned the corner in seeing the, uh, the capabilities and the positive impact that instant payments can have. If we were looking two, three years ago, it would have been trying to define the definition of what an instant payment is. Now we have projects on the go. Uh, we have more and more countries moving. So it's definitely um, a project that the banks are, are taking on, and that's good news. So how do you think banks should be preparing for instant payments? I think there's still a challenge in making instant payments pay. Uh, consumers have expressed unwillingness to uh, pay more for a service of instant payments. They just expect it uh, for free, like most internet services. 
uh, I think corporates would be willing to pay more for the right service. And I think banks have to find the ability to package up and offer corporates more value-added services. So if you build the system to satisfy the consumer demand, but provide the value-added services to make a revenue stream from the corporates, that becomes the sweet spot for the instant payment projects. So banks really need to take, uh, take a look at this holistically. Trevor, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.